Ayo. <laughs> I, I've been triggered so much with this woman. <laughs> I'm a turd. You know, it's triggered again because I've been there. It's not a fun situation. You guys hear the tape? Yeah. Well, there were many times. The tape with the, um, um, uh, when she's lit, I mean, you could, you could almost see her in Johnny's face. He, you know, just trying to get him mad. I really think that because she knew that he wasn't going to hit her, that he would do what he always does, which is to leave, which she always, I guess, pointed out as being cowardly, as being uh, something that is, um, n notice she's always messing with his manhood. Um, you know, like uh, insinuating that, she, that he's not man enough because he's not staying there and arguing with someone who's not listening. They just want to, <laughs> they love drama and they love being right. And as you've seen, you know, her answering questions, you know, it's just, it's so triggering because it's, um, it's what I had to go through. I mean, it's a good thing. It's, 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 it's a blessing that I don't, I have zero contact because, um, um, it's stressful. It's very stressful to be dealing with somebody like that. And to know that Johnny had to drink, yeah, you have to, you have to stay numb to deal with people like that. So it, in essence, you know, you realize that, wait a second, I'm doing this all to myself because of this person. So you kind of like, this This what makes you move away because um, you, um, you're so stressed out and the, and 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 the vice is not doing it. <laughs> That's the thing that is supposed to make you feel really good, and it doesn't. It doesn't. So, it's um, it's a bitch. It's a bitch having to deal with somebody like that. And the thing is that they always want to argue, and um, and you uh, it's 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 a pair situation, you know. Somebody who is like Johnny or like me. We'll end up with somebody like that because of the, you know, the childhood hangups that we have, you know. So we do exactly the same thing that we did. We, whenever there's somebody loud and obnoxious, but but basically loud because our parents were had these booming voices where they just yell, and so you just kind of learn to to identify when things are getting too hot and disappear when that happens. It's again. It 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 does sound cowardly when you think about it, but in essence, it's like when you think of, if you're dealing with your whole with it your whole life, it's like fuck, not again. See ya. Like you just don't want to deal with with it, you know. So, uh, him having to move to different houses. I mean, Jesus, I would, I moved to another planet if I could. It's 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 hell. It's hell having to uh, live, live with somebody like that, having to argue the thing that they always want to argue because they love being right. Because you're not going to get any... It's like it's like playing baseball with somebody that doesn't let you be at bat. <laughs> it's like, no, 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 you, you're always going to be playing defense. I'm like, what? You know, it's, it's and literally, literally you get tired of having to argue. Um, you per the, uh, the other tape. Um... Of Johnny, just um, just I just want to stop this stupid argument. And again, they do that a lot. Whenever you have a, an important situation like a family gathering, or something that maybe you've seen some friends, they always find a way to to create drama, because you have some you know, it's it, they're so insecure, they're so incredibly insecure. You know when she broke down on the other table, 
that you don't need me because you don't know you, you feel like I'm dying and this and that. It's true. They are dying. They, 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 you know, it's you're dealing with little kids. I mean, people who never grew up. My ex's mother-in-law used to, uh, my ex, you know, her mother, used to always say that I, I had a, a Peter Pan um, complex because I like to have fun with my children, like play with my children, you know? So I have somehow a, a, Peter, a Peter Pan complex. It's like you, you made your daughter, and your daughter is, can't grow up. She's still living next door to her parents. I asked many, many times, let's move out of here. Let's move out, because we need... My father-in-law, God bless his soul, he's very a very nice person. Another man being taken advantage by these hyenas. So, it's, it's a family affair, it's just tradition, it's something that they hand, you know, to the next generation, you know, my daughters are, unfortunately, um, in the same boat now, so um, it's it's a bitch because you feel so alone. Again, when you're so out outnumbered, you start feeling like you are crazy. But it's like no, you just uh, honestly you're just disrupting the status quo. The status quo is for you to shut up and then let them do whatever they want. You know, uh, obviously they want you back because. Um, um, you fill that hole. Obviously, nobody is going to. Um, basically, it's because you let so much st stuff slide because you're you're not getting violent with them because you fill that narcissistic um, supply. You know, and this person is a psychopath, and so was my ex. You know, it's 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 because I mean, all the symptoms are there. <laughs> I mean, you read the description, you're just going. You know, it's like, again, you don't know until you start doing research, until you start going, well, wait a second, this isn't right. <laughs> I better look into this. And I've always been that way. It's like I can't just have a doubt and just let it be, you know. And it's like if I have a doubt, I, I, I want to find out about it. I mean, listen, that that is the root of, of you know, learning, or of knowledge gathering, of evolving, you know, and... Um, intellectually, you first you have the doubt, so then you create you you put the effort into into um, into learning it. You know, um, if you didn't feel ignorant, you wouldn't want to learn. You know, so uh, in essence, uh, the same works in this case is having. Having to be in a situation like that is a no-win situation. So you know that anything is going to be better. So you just just get me out of here, you know. So um, the fact that she was making such a big deal, you know, don't leave me because you know I'm dying over here. You know, you you don't know what what kind of problems you bring me when you uh you know you when you do this to me when you leave me in this and that and um you know while well, he's he's gonna go inside and 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 see his daughter but the, the the again the icky thing is when Johnny says to his driver or one of his guys hey can you guys uh, take her back um she right away perks up and puts on a neck like oh yeah hey how you doing yes I'm ready to go yeah can you take me home like she is asking like like she is the one ordering me and it's not Johnny that is um, that is actually saying please take her home you know so I'm ready to go it's just always this picture of perfection you know and um, obviously you know the best part about this whole situation like I said from the very first uh, video made about this it's that people are just so savvy now the, the year uh, 2012 was a big year it was a leap in our consciousness it was a paradigm shift and again like I said before it's like the Mayans weren't are not responsible for our own for our our own assumptions in these times you know we said we, we ended up saying that they got it wrong it was it's so idiotic 
for just a common Joe to say that the Mayans got it wrong. You know how insulting that is, a civilization that lived thousands of years ago with so many um, mechanic or evolutionary, um, you know, if you call it, if you could, you could call it landmarks or in, in time, you know, uh, things that you can go back and be like, this is when this was invented. Not some idiot, you know, on, in front of a keyboard. You know what I mean? So it's like 2012 was a, was the end of an era and the beginning of a new one. And what I am trying to say is that the light is just making its way through a little bit more, a little bit deeper. So that we're all like, just think about what happens when a candle gets, uh, you know, gets close to a crowd. The crowd, you all of a sudden you see their faces, right? You see more. If you're in the dark, you know, one candle can light up a whole room, right? And then all of a sudden, things just seem a little bit easier, not so uncertain. Again, the light brings the enlightenment. Yes, you guys are part of the Illuminati. <laughs> you know, uh, the enlightened ones. It's, it's real, these things, you know, yeah, but I don't expect the, you know, the average Joe to get these things, you know, and if you get insulted by 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 me saying, uh, you know, average Joe, then you are one of them. Sorry, change channel. But honestly, it's 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 about evolution, and sometimes if people don't get you, it's not you, it's them that it's not necess they're not necessarily up to speed with certain things, you know. So they just laugh it out and 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 knock it. For instance, being peaceful being friendly a lot of people see that as a weakness especially in this in this society you know that uh, in a set in a country like the united states you know it seemed like a weakness or seemed like you're not being honest i mean my um according to my ex's version you know i wasn't on the level because i, I was too happy i was i smiled too much i was too nice it was it was too good to be true you must be hiding something <laughs> again like i said before when you're a liar you expect everybody to lie i can't lie i won't because i feel icky when i do it so if i feel leaky why the fuck am i lying to you just to please you or to make you feel like you know comfortable i'm going here through all this discomfort shit and then the just to fit in with you fuck that so you have to keep your own center. You have to keep your own what's about you and not be swayed by all these opinions and all these people telling you that what's what. You're not crazy. If you feel it, it's for a reason. And when, again, when all of us are seeing Amber Turd speak, we all have these faces like we have a piece of shit in front of our nose. Because <laughs> we don't like what we're hearing because it's dissonant. See, there is a concept, a in fact, a natural law. It's a hermetic law. It's a concept of vibration. Everything rings. Everything vibrates. So if I'm vibrating at a certain level, and somebody is in front of me, like Amber Turd, is, um, is speaking, she's not at the same vibration, especially if I feel the distortions. There's a discrepancy on the signal. Like I said before, it, if, yeah. when you're a person, excuse me, when you're a person who meditates, you're, you're more acquainted with peace. So when people come with their drama, oh, that's a big, big distorted um, signal. This is not peace. That's the, this is foreign to me. This is, there's a, Intruder alert, intruder alert, you're getting all these signals telling you, so you, you know, decide to walk away or not deal with these people, and this is the same people that said, he thinks he's too good. It's like, no, I just, honestly, I've been th with enough people like you that I can't let you bring me down. Again, with that negativity, like, if he thinks he's too good. It's like, this is, this is your assumption. Somebody who is wiser would just be like, he needs his own space, or 
you know, whatever. He would kind of come up with a more benign, con- you know, concept or argument or not say anything at all. That's the thing that God is silence. God is silence. God is a void. Like I said before in, in another video, if you want, you guys want to feel what that feels like, just exp- just investigate in a movie like the Avengers uh, Age of Ultron when Ultron is just a program and he awakes he's on and he goes well this is strange I want you to remember that this 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 guy doesn't have a body he is just an awareness He doesn't even have a floor to stand on. He's only an awareness. There are no walls around him. He is only an awareness. There are no limitations to him. You remember how he would infiltrate every computer in the world? He could just be there in seconds. Because he was graspless. What was that? Uh, graspless. Uh, uh, shapeless like water. You put water into a cup, it becomes a cup. You put water into a teapot, it becomes a teapot. Now water can flow or it can crash. Be water, my friend. Oh, what happened? He just channeled himself through me. <laughs> no, just that I throw that in and just a little bit of fun but it's a good concept again is it is it was Bruce Lee who actually um has um you know been a big influence in my life but literally he's you know um his teachings you know they show that it's like if you if you have to hit somebody to agree with you for instance like Johnny said or you know in in case of uh, in this case Bruce Lee talking about you're not necessarily a smart person if you have to push people around to make your point. You see, as a martial artist, and, I, and I'm one, you learn to fight so you don't have to. Because you essentially, you're, like another guy said, you're literally rehearsing murder with practicing these movements. And when, th- when you think about it, me, when I read that, that Bruce Lee would throw a, a thousand punches. Guess what I did? I would throw a thousand punches too. Shit, I would go two thousand. Fuck it, you know, just to get that finesse that he has. Yeah, he had. You know, I say has because you know I can watch him any time on you know on a movie or on a video. You know, and he's everywhere now. But the point is that you have to relax, and by relax you have to. Do away with anything that gets in the way of that peace. So it's not just about like, okay, I'll relax. <sighs> you know, you breathe, take a few deep breaths, and you're relaxed. Now, okay, so you're relaxed. Yes, you brought down your um, your heart rate and everything, but being in home in a in a homeostasis state and keep it, meaning a point of, you know devoid of any any emotions basically you're n- a neutral point you know so when you have somebody yelling at you you know and you're a martial artist and you have to practice murder <laughs> over and over <laughs> it's rehearsed murder by the way that's just it's rehearsed murder thousands of times and you've practiced it on on your bodies too because you know you've gone and trained with other martial artists and you punch the ba- all kinds of bags, all sizes, you know, big, small, fast, little, big, you know. I said big, small, yeah. They're, you know, sometimes they're square, sometimes it's round, sometimes it's full of water, sometimes it's full of sand, you know, or rags, different feels, you know. So you kind of get all that, oof, all that angst out of you. So when you have somebody yelling in your face, it's tough. It's tough because, you know, Hanging out with guys and wrestling with guys and fighting guys and everything, you, you kind of like, oh, you're gonna let her let her talk to you like that? Oh, he's the, she's saying you're a bitch, you know. <laughs> so that kind of stuff still comes up, you know. But 
again is it's it's with great power comes great responsibility right so you don't you you don't go especially because i saw it i saw it in my family when i was a kid my mom getting in her getting that shit kicked out of her you know and me being too small to protect her you know I mean, what that does to a child, because you grow up thinking that you're a coward, is like, oh, but I was five, you know? <laughs> you have to remind yourself, you know, that, yeah, I was like seven, I think, when I saw these things, you know? But, you know, what it does to you as a child is that when the shit gets really hot, you know, especially as it's when it's domestic. I mean, because, you know, when you're in the ring, when you're in the mat, you know, it's different, but... When it's domestic, you know, it it brings back all that shit, you know, so, and you just know, you know, I'm not going to do this in front of my kids, you know, I saw that shit and traumatized the shit out of me, you know, I'm not going to put my kids through this stuff, in fact, some of the big fights that I have with my ex, you know, when my kids were there, it's just like, it's just, it's a horrible that, yeah, they have to see this stuff, and I was like, fuck, I promised myself they'll never go through this and never see this, and it's just like, you the depths the depths that you sink to that this person pulls you to down to you know it's it's unbelievable you never in your wildest dreams think that you, your family your the one that you chose as your partner in life will take you down those those roads that low that horrible to horrible places basically you know to have just ch- shouting matches. Um, especially because again, you had a booming voice. You're so loud. Um, and just put it out, you know, it's just, and not only do all the neighbors know about it, you know, but again, my children, being teenagers, being so embarrassed and stuff like that, you know. It's, and you walk away to stop it. To stop it, I mean, because you can't sit this back and forth, you know, it's just too much. It's like you just walk away. And then they, they, they're on your ass, you know, telling you, oh, there you go again. They're running to the bathroom, you fucking coward, and this and that. Oh, there he goes again, you know, his, his big sanctuary, you know. And, you know, they're just and they talking and talking and talking outside that door, telling you how you're not man enough. And then when they get inside and they're right here, in your face you know how much control you need to not just just let one go but you know it's like every time you do that you just see the future and it's like nope that's bad <laughs> that's bad that's a bad future when you again you guys if you ever have a chance to 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 stop and make it and and you should do that you should do that pause stop to think about what will happen if you take that action. Just flash, it's, it's a real quick flash. I mean, you don't have to stop and be like, wait a second, you know. It's a quick flash. What will happen if you go through this, if you do the, if you are the aggressor? Because let's face it, man. I mean, I personally, I, I learned to fight because I was terrified of fighting. And then it got fun because <laughs> I knew what what to do, right? But I never like you know did like street street fights, you know, because like that, you know, if it was for for let's say for to build reputation, you know, and it, this is like you know in the fighting circuit and stuff like that, you know, to you know earn your bones and stuff like that, then yeah, that's fine, you know. Hopefully, getting paid that's even better, right? But um, you know, but in for something like that, it's not even worth it. For some idiot that maybe calls your name, flips you off and stuff like that, and or your wife, you know, yelling in your face, it's not worth it. Not worth it at all. Especially if you, especially if you're a trained martial artist and you, you know, got it out of your system many times, you know. But when you have somebody in your face, it takes a lot of effort. So what I'm saying is that Johnny should actually be rewarded something for not suck her in the face when I mean you hurt uh, those she's just so nasty she's just being so vile so horrible like just trying to get them just hurting trying to hurt, hurt his feelings basically and and that laugh you know that laugh that is like oh in, in, in that tone that mocking tone that she'd use a whole telling telling him that he was a uh, 
a sellout. Oh, I would be embarrassed if I was a teenage star, TV star. And it's like, bitch, you were not, you, you are nothing. What are you talking about? You would want to be a teenage superstar, you know, at, 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 you know, when you first start working as an actor. I mean, talking about she, that he, Johnny was jealous of her career. Come on. And, and as you saw uh, in the questioning and the cross exam, what do they call it? Cross examining. Um, the, there was all this, um, you couldn't get her to admit anything, nothing. And every, it was everybody else's fault. Including, including her sister, she sold out so many people, and, and but the also, it's it's again it's just, oh yeah yeah that, that I know that was his response, but I I doubt that he was sure of the time of the day. It's like it, it was always some added argument to um to say that well she's not wrong. It was like, that's what they think, but you know that's not the truth. The truth is what I say. You know, and uh, obviously when she would get upset when beautiful Miss Vasquez would say stuff. <laughs> you say stuff. She's so cute. And she's, I don't want to get her in trouble, but, I, you know, it's obvious that she has the hearts for, for Johnny. And Johnny is trying to be like, Espérate, you chill, because, you know, people watching. <laughs> <laughs> but... I don't think they're dating, but I mean, definitely. I mean, I mean, I, a few. I mean, they're girls. They li they they like what they see. <laughs> so, uh, um, in fact, I say I've seen the interaction. You know, when when uh, Miss Vasquez, um, Camille, is always trying to touch Johnny. Have you guys noticed that? It was just so cute. So I was trying to touch Johnny. You know, and um, whenever. Johnny's leaving, like she just fucking pushes everybody out of the way, and they're like, "Oh, I want to give you a hug." He's like, "Okay, hug," and <laughs> moves over to see to go hug Johnny because he's leaving, right? <laughs> After the questioning, I think it was the first day or something when she wore white, when she kicked ass, basically. Um, she um, <laughs> she goes and and does the same thing, right? She's kind of goes straight to go hug Johnny, and. And her boss turns around and gives her a hug. It's like again, it's always somebody in front of <laughs> in front of Johnny. I mean, she just wants to get to it. Oh, and there, there was a chair that <laughs> got in the way. <laughs> she pushes the chair. It's like hug, hug. Say like a little girl, hug, hug. <laughs> she's adorable. Oh, she's so cute and she's so smart and she kind. Oh, I I, I kind of want them. I can, you know, I kind of want them together after this whole, in, you know, like when she's questioning, as you could tell, she's like, um, and you told him this and that. How could you? I would never do that. <laughs> it's awesome. It's awesome. I love the interactions they have. And then the other girls on the team, some of them, they get upset, you know, they're like, you know, when she's touching him, it's like, oh, she's always touching him. <laughs> I'm sure they think that she's like being a professional and stuff like that. Which kind of, like, you know, puts the whole, you know, jury says this stuff, you know, it could affect them. But uh, also the jury is just, you could tell they're just so turned off by what's her name. Because of how she comes off, you know. It's like, ugh. And then she's always looking at the jury, looking at oh, creepy. Just creepy, um, but that's that's why I that's why you know in my case you know hmm, if you go to court you're gonna look just like that. Yes, I'm talking to you. I know you're watching. I know you're watching. I know you've been spying on me. I know my Facebook and all that stuff. I know you're using some different name, but I know you're watching. So I hope. In fact, that's the plan to get you understand. So people can see that face that Amber has, you'll have the same face. Because your lies won't won't pass the test, won't pass the grade. 
Everybody will get a look. Everybody will get a glimpse. Because I was outnumbered. Outnumbered. And um, all I need is more witnesses. People to watch you in action. That's the thing that, you know, you start doubting yourself when you're there because there's so much, you, you're so outnumbered. They, they just make it, it's, everything is so about themselves that it, you just become sucked into their world or into their drama, into their horrible life where, you know, everything's a problem that you do and, but they love you. And then they ask you for forgiveness and then you, you know, you like, okay, let's just take a break. You know, and, you know, go our separate ways, you know. And then later on, it's just like it, nothing happened. It's like, fuck, man. It's just crazy. It's just crazy. And you just feel like you can't breathe. But again, when you're arguing with someone like that, you're not going to get anywhere. So don't even waste your time. And that's it. And Johnny did exactly what I did. Anybody who has any kind of useful gray matter would be like, this is fruitless. What the hell am I doing here arguing? It's not like she's going to admit to anything. <laughs> so you just walk away. Because then it just gets hotter and hotter and hotter and more intense and more intense and kids watching and shit, you know? Because they don't give a shit. I mean, by the way, whenever she did the hitting, you know, me as a martial artist, I just took it or, you know, like I just, you know, because it's kind of like a test of endurance, you know, you want to see how much you can take, you know, because, I mean, I, that was my, my business, you know, uh, you know, being able to evade punches, you know, so, so I would work on my defense, seriously, I would work on my defense on shelling up and, you know, uh, moving about or just holding, you know, like, uh, it's so easy, you know, somebody swinging at you, you know, you just can bury one of their arms, get on the outside and just hold them and they don't, they don't hurt you. I mean, like, I got really good at high fighting like Mayweather, I guess, <laughs> just, you know, hold them and stuff and, um, but, it's really easy, but you know, again, it, it, the swings do come, you know, and uh, you get hit and you get hurt, and then whenever, you know, because they're swinging at you so much, they end up getting hurt themselves. They break their hand or they twist their fingers or their nail breaks and shit, and uh, and now oh oh oh, oh and, and now everybody thinks I just hurt her. I I swear they do this kind of shit, like the bathroom thing. That's what I'm talking about. The you know the. She is fucking knocking down the door. Johnny's there because he doesn't want to hear it. He just wants to break. Think about it. Somebody, blah, 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 blah. What, do you, what would you do? You want to break. You just walk away. You just walk away. Imagine somebody blah, 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 like that. You just let her have one, like that, like this is in the honeymooners. One of these days to the moon, you know. One of these days. What, what if you do, right? Imagine something like that. No, forget about it. It gets worse. No. So you walk away. So he walked away. He's in the bathroom. She's knocking down the door. And I say, I believe what happened, what, that that happened because it happened. It happened to me too. They want to get in and they're pushing and they're pushing. And you're like, no, I just you're holding it close. But now they're, they're, it's, it's, they have unlocked it and they're pushing and they're pushing. And you're just holding it. And toes get smashed, scraped, my toes, right? But then again, as you're closing the door, then they start going, oh, 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 oh. and I'm like, what happened? And you let go of the door, and they come in and start beating the shit out of you. And again, to me, I did this when I was when I was a kid, and my mom used to beat the shit out of me, and it wasn't like you know like abuse. It was more, well, I guess you could call it abuse, but it was more like you know to get me get me straight. I mean, she she was a single mom in those days, and raising two boys, so <laughs> we got out of line. We got we got the chancla, you know, we got the belt, you know. But uh, uh, what we learned to do, my brother and I, was to make her laugh, and then she would stop here. <laughs> so. <laughs> I would, she starts swinging, I just hold her and start dancing with her and stuff like <laughs> to make her laugh. And she just start laughing and then she stop hitting us. And she's okay, just get away, you know. And, and <laughs> so you see, you get good at this kind of stuff when you grow up with this shit.
But somebody who's spoiled, who gets everything, they'll hit you, they'll push you, they'll they'll insult you because they want to get their way. It's, it's how dare you say no to them? How dare you t- give me limitations? How dare you, you don't do what I say? It's a big insult to them. And right now, the woman, when she was in there and then she left because she left when she wasn't supposed to, she's supposed to let the jury out and also the, the, the judge, you know, this, this, this is a form of respect. But she was too worked up that she just rushed out of there because she was, I'm sure she was bursting out in tears because she was probably saying, they're all against me. Honestly. Think about who sounds like that too. Hmm. Was in the White House. Yeah. Same kind of sick sick mind that actually thinks that they should be idolized, that they should be rewarded, and nobody else should. This whole problem is because Johnny has more fame than she does. Honestly. This whole issue, it's about her absorbing everything that Johnny is because she doesn't think he deserves it. Why? The Dior com- the Dior campaign. When he got the Dior campaign, is it Dior? Yeah, Dior campaign. She got pissed. Cause like you, that fucking look. I got it all the time from this woman. All the time. I never knew. <laughs> I never knew that you could, that you could love somebody and be envious of them, be jealous of them, compete with them, do everything to sabotage everything they do, to push away contracts to push away clients to push away people that bring me prosperity and then they they'll sit there and it's like you're such a fucking loser because you can't make any fucking money it's like why well, i would make money but you're fucking blowing it with all my clients and shit you know i have a business and you're making me just i have no business now because it's just like just they, they, you gotta understand no matter where it is it could be fucking Hockey. <laughs> fucking Johnny picks up hockey. She would fucking try to sabotage it, try to, you know, ruin it. Nothing is supposed to make him happy but her. And she withholds the happiness. So what is he supposed to do? It's like, oh, you, you'll be happy when I say you're happy. That's what I'm talking about. Somebody's so goddamn sick and demented. So when I when I read the descriptions for psychopath, I'm like, oh my god. It's like that movie. So I married an axe murderer. It's like I married a fucking psychopath. <laughs> it's like what the fuck. But it's the, these patterns. It's just, we're we're a bunch of fucking patterns, and we're living our patterns. And again point the, or the concept of calmness, the, con- the concept of peace should be in, pointed out here because yeah. if you don't have peace then you're just going to get pulled into that kind of crap and just go back and forth like cats and dogs right? like they say I've never seen cats and dogs do that but whatever <laughs> but um, you know so when you're familiar with peace all you want is peace and you can recognize peace oh there's peace over there I'll go over there ah, that's where I want to be but these people that are over here and it's like no but you have to fix this it's like fix what there's nothing to fix you don't want to fix anything you just want to fix me <laughs> you want to fix me you want to fix me into thinking like you and to think, thinking that you're the one and who's right here but who's vin- being vicious and horrible and disgusting insulting and just physical overbearing, manipulating, controlling. I mean, it's like, talk about just controlling your mind. I mean, shit, that's not enough. They got to control you physically. It's like, you fucking do this. Like I say, do it. I mean, literally, they will push your head down to the floor if they want you to fucking scrub the floor. Why? Because I want. if you love me, you'll do it. Just very immature people. And I mean, you saw. I mean... She goes to Coachella. She makes a a TikTok for her, for him or something, you know. So he, 
Yeah, like just saying fuck you, you know. I mean, then goes and fucks around with James Franco, you know, during when you know, it's, it's just it's, these are low things that these people do because again, it's like I'm gonna show you that other people find me interesting. It's just that simple, that that factual, that basic. It's like dating a fucking kindergartner. Being married, being living, living, sharing bills, sharing responsibilities with a fucking toddler. I mean, look at his world now. It's destroyed. It's destroyed. We no no more Jack Sparrow. And who knows, you know, no more working with Disney. <laughs> That's crazy. Disney's a huge company to work for. You know, I have I haven't personally worked for Disney just yet. John, a lot of the stuff that I've done has been for uh, Warner Brothers and stuff like that. But be nice to do some Disney, <laughs> and he had it. And I mean, Disney grew up huge with this franchise, and and then the the other uh, films too, because it wasn't just uh, pirates. You know, he did a lot of movies. You know, that were distributed by Disney. And now that's bye bye. Why? Because this this thing, you know, decided to. Um, it's what do they call it? Uh, oh, I forgot. It's like a demon who uh, who sucks your energy basically through sex. Uh, oh my God! I'm I can't think of it. It's coming in and it goes out. It's coming in and it goes. Out. It was that it'll come back, I guess. But it's very, it's very, um, I guess it's very popular these days. The fact of, you know, having, or the concept of, um, of, um, of someone who's like that, like a demon, a woman who's like a demon that sucks your energy through sex. Um, yeah, I mean, they trap you with the sex. And then they lure you in. Yeah. And then they say, you can't have it. <laughs> they say, but, but, but you you were just did it yesterday. It was so good. Yeah, I know, but I don't feel like it today. And then the next day is the same. And the next day is the same. It's like, but that was really good, though. And then some they end up saying, okay, today. Okay, fine. And then it goes again, a long, long time again, if it had to happen again. But you're like, but that, that last time was really good. <laughs> you know, because you always forget, you always uh, remember the first one and the last one, right? So, yeah, these people are crafty. Um, they, because when you're in love, I think that a lot of people, you know, want to live this, um, there I go, Disney you know, adventure or or love story. Uh, and you just, you hear the the lines, you know, you do it, you know. You don't have to explain if when you love somebody or something like that, you know. Um, so you do what you can to, um, to be a sweet because through, through the sweetness, you're telling them, you know, I care about you and I love you and I'll do anything for you. But they, they again, these kinds of people, they see it as a weakness and they see it as a handle and now that's the button that they'll, they'll press every time and once you don't do that, then they'll say well, I, I'll cut out the love and you won't get it and you know, if you have issues with, you know, feeling unloved or, yeah um, you know, you're going to be chasing this person you know, to your your own aggressor, your own abuser. You're gonna be chasing your abuser. So again, this, because again, I told her everything about myself, and um, so she just knew where where to take again the during the love bombing uh, phase. You know, in the beginning, it's called love bombing because it's like they treat you like you're everything. They treat you amazing, and Johnny said the same thing about her, right? You feel it's too good to be true. This is amazing. This is the one, you know, because they're just agreeing to everything you're saying. Because you know, the, 
they're playing a part and the part is of that of a fucking black widow in fact she told me she was going to get a tattoo in her inner thigh of a black widow I wish she would have gotten it that would have given me a clue you know but they just basically they just sit there and wait for the plan to be executed because they know every step that you're going to take so in the end they just devour you it's fucked up because like I said before we live in the age of I love you dads guys guys who you know grew up in broken homes and if you if, if you didn't grow up in a, in a broken home that consider yourself lucky because I think about 99% of the population has grown up in a fucking broken home so we're, we're all in the same boat in this case so the person that we, that's, that's with us sometimes it just it's someone that reminds us of our abusers our parents or, some, or whoever raised us you know and I say our parents as abusers because not because they were abu- um, abusive but it's because or sometimes they were but but because that's what they knew they got the abuse from their parents so they did it to us you know it's just what they knew you know so as you evolve you can, you, you change the game right you stop that pattern you know and that's what we're all doing in this generation, I think, that we're trying to uh, heal the karma of the past, you know, by being good parents, by being loving, by being people who want a relationship, who want to have a family, who want to have someone there, you know, to uh, sp- spend our whole life together. Like the whole, you know, um, what was it called? Um, wedding, wedding singer thing. You know, like in The Wedding Singer, you know, uh, how... He's not supposed to be marrying this girl, and they're talking about after she just completely left him in the altar. You know, I get information that he could have used yesterday. Because that's the way I felt. It's like this is information I could have used yesterday, years ago. But um, anyway, they were speaking about, oh, well, it's because Robbie always wanted to be married, always wanted to have somebody, always wanted a family of his own ever since our parents died. See, these are childhood traumas, you know. Uh, so again, me and Johnny have a lot in common, <laughs> um, which, in essence, what I'm trying to do is not only advocating for myself but advocating for the guy too, because I know where he, where he's coming from and I know the type of guy he is because he's I'm the same type. I could get into hardcore drugs if if. If I'm suffering, if I'm depressed, if I'm hurting, I could go, you know, because you don't want to feel that pain, you know. And, but then these fucking people are feeding you the drugs. You don't understand. Or, you know, at the same, or also, they're basically the reason why you're doing them. Basically. I mean, that's basically the main the main reason, the main point here, that then it's, it's so stressful that the darkest parts of you come out and then you realize wait a second what the fudge is this this is not me or wait you like I, I was because you end up being going you know to such steps like I said before you feel like a foreigner in your own home you feel like this is ground I've always avoid it like I did everything possible to not be here in this spot and look at me you know like I grew up and I saw abuse in my in my natal home and what do I do I end up in the, with the person who is just like my abuser back when I was at home again going back to Jenny from Forrest Gump what did she do she looked for men who reminded her of her dad. Why? Because dad was supposed to deliver the love. And when this little girl got that treatment, she thought, that's love. So then she went and looked for it in other men. And then when a good, sweet man like Forrest would confess his love to her, she'd say, Forrest, what'd she say? Forrest, you don't know what love is. She didn't know what love was. And she was fucking gaslighting Forrest. <laughs> then, I mean, they go, she goes and whores around and then she comes like, I'm sick. 
Hmm. Hmm. Seeing that movie a whole lot different now. And I took her for a f date to watch that movie. It was literally telling me the future. <sighs> that was Forrest, basically. Grew up with a sweet mom, and I just wanted someone like that, someone sweet. Um, she just played it like that. So, as you saw the her side, her lawyers, you know, barely talk to her. They're, everything is so like, ugh. you could cut the tension with the knife. And over here on this side, it's like Wonderland, you know, <laughs> with uh, Johnny shows up and everybody smiles, you know, it's just like bright eyed, you know, it's not because he's a movie star, it's because how he he presents himself. I mean, I'm, uh, you could be a movie star and be an asshole and you wouldn't get those smiles from people. Again, it's just like, I mean, especially on a daily basis, you know. So it's some of us just are that way. And, you know, I enough with, oh, he's fake. Well, if you find that that's fake, that's probably because you don't know what that is because you never experienced something genuine. So you don't know how to identify it. Same, you know like a Jenny thing <laughs> you think that what's what's right is completely wrong so patterns patterns we're dealing with all of this and uh, we're seeing it on display we're seeing what one uh, one side their upbringing did to them and their actions today and the other side yeah uh, Again, when you grow up spoiled, when you get your way all the time, that you have the parents in it. That you charge the parents too. For parent, I mean, I'm gonna leave you guys with this because this is so imperative right now, especially with what's, what happened with what's happening with um, um, Roe versus Wade. It's fucking ridiculous. It's like, if somebody fucking made decisions on what is proper for me, I'd be pissed. Right? This is just like fucking with the United States back in 1941. You're messing with, you're poking the sleeping giant. And these chicks, hmm, you guys, you, you hmm, they gonna, they're gonna be pissed. They're not gonna let that happen. Trust me, that's not going to stand. But anyway, the point I'm trying to make here is, or what I'm going to leave you with is what Keanu, Reeve, Keanu Reeves' character said in the movie Parenthood. It's one of his first few movies, Parenthood, with Steve Martin. Everybody thinks that, and you know, he's an airhead, you know, like, it's like a shadow, it's just like, it's Keanu, you know? It's like, Tua. <laughs> and so he's in the kitchen with the mom, with his, um, his girlfriend's uh, mom. They, he's been living there. They actually got married, you know, in, in secret. So now he's a husband, right? And, um, and they have a teenage, um, his wife has a teenage brother. You know, so the brother is doing, you know, what little boys do around 12 years old. And so, you know, this guy talks to him. And then the mom finds out. It's like, oh, I heard you talk to him. It's like, yeah, I talked to him. And I told him, to, well, that's what little dudes do. And, he, and, 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 and that it was normal. And, um, and she says, you did? And, and what did he say? He said, um, he smiled. And I think that made him feel good. <laughs> and then what happened? It's like, and we just talked, you know, or something like that. He's like, he just went on his way or something. It was just like a very, you know, matter of fact, you know, conversation. And 
he goes and she just like completely amazed it's like this guy just fixed my kid you know like just completely helped out big time you know because this kid was so confused about it you know he felt wrong about himself you know and this and that so and he's like you know that poor little dude has, come, has got some issues <laughs> you know but you know what are you gonna do you know and he goes you know you need a license to drive a car you need a license to have a dog but any old moron can have a child a child you know, I screwed up that last line, but, uh, you know, anyway, it's, it's so true. And, and you know, and the, the mom was just like, just like, wow, as he's walking away. Because he's like, any, any more, any one more could have a child. And he just sits there in space, you know, staring in space and goes, <laughs> and then he leaves. <laughs> he's like, that like I don't like the bad vibes that just that made me feel so it's like forget it I'm out of here you know so he just goes on doing his mer- on his merry way. He just I've, I've I've heard this line once you know and the truth can comes can come from anywhere. So don't be too judgy about about who's delivering the truth. As long as it's truth and it resonates with you, then you were meant to hear that. And I was meant to hear that, because I agreed with all of that. I, I, I it, was a for, it was a form of validation to me, hearing that guy say that line. You need a license to drive a car. You need a license to have a dog. He was like amazed, like you needed all these licenses to do things right. But just anybody can have a child. Now we're dealing with this shit. Unwanted babies, they grow up feeling unwanted. They grow up feeling alienated, feeling like they don't fit in. Do you think they're going to be happy? Or are they just going to be another dysfunctional human being who are going to get up on a fucking high tower and start shooting people? Because they grew up feeling alienated, feeling alone, feeling like they didn't fit in, feeling angry because of it. It, it is, it, I mean, it is obvious, right? I mean, like I said, you're thinking about it, making a decision. See yourself with one of the outcomes. See yourself in the future. If, I mean, this is, just, you can see the path, you know, running straight to those problems. But people who can't understand change, who don't want to change, who don't, you can't, 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 it scares them. Don't move. Nobody move because it scares me. Forget about it. They should get an island somewhere and leave us alone. <laughs> anyway, this thing is about an hour. I'll continue to talk about this kind of stuff and more. All right, on the next ones, I have a couple of videos that I haven't posted and I'll be posting them all together. So you'll be receiving a lot of them. Anyway, yo, chill, be nice people. And have a wonderful day.